And then I discovered these soils are awful. So I, I talked to numerous friends of mine who are certified soil scientists that work for the USDA and so forth, and I showed them what I had. I gave them the analysis of my soil, and I said, what do you think? And all of them basically said, Michael, these soils cannot be fixed. Oh, God. Put a for sale sign on it and go somewhere else. <laughs> wow. And, uh, and, well, that wasn't really a feasible solution for me at that time, and so here we are today. Uh, 23 or 24 years later with a giant redwood that is 60 feet tall that I started from seed in 1989. I have oak trees on this property that I started from seed. I put the seed in the ground on the spot the tree is growing in the year 2000 that are now 35 to 40 feet tall. That's only nine growing seasons. Well, 2,000, yeah, that would be eight or nine growing seasons. Wow. And they're 40, 35 to 40 feet in height. So uh, we have uh, sugar maples growing on this site, giant timber bamboo, uh, more native species of oak native to the New Mexico, Texas, Chihuahuan Desert, more species than any botanical garden on earth wow. are on this property. And one of the largest oak species collections in the United States is on this property. I have oaks from Iran, Israel, North Africa, Europe, um, throughout the Southwest, Mexico. How did you fix your salt problem to do this? Essentially what I used was a marvelous product of soil chemistry. Okay. Something that is made in nature anyway. If you went into a pristine environment, undisturbed soil environment, where there's a lot of vegetation already growing there, like the tall grass prairies of the Midwest that haven't yet been plowed, and dug down into the soil, you'll see that the soil has a rich black color to it and a wonderful aroma. And what gives it that quality is a biomolecule called humus. Now, some people say humus, oh yeah, I make that in my compost pile all the time. Uh-huh. Well, humus is a biomolecule. It is not organic matter in the true sense. Okay. It is a product of soil chemistry. It is derived from a conversion of amino acids uh-huh. from the amino acid structure into the humic acids structure. Right. That's how nature does it. Okay. So if we were to go back here into this bamboo and, and scrape away all the leaf litter mm -hmm. and get down to the uh, mineral soil, you will see that it is, it is now a rich black color because it is, it is now rich in humus. Well, to answer your question, I know how to make humus. Right. So, but all the so soil scientists didn't, they said you can't fix this problem. They don't, they didn't understand how humus works. It is still not well understood how humus works. And there are many soil scientists that will even argue with me to this day that humus cannot accomplish this objective, but I'll disagree. I think what happens is that humus does something to the soil's physical behavior mm -hmm. where it actually causes the, this is clay, and this clay is about 12 feet deep. It causes the clay to go from a really hard, compacted state, and I have a chunk of it, by the way, over there that I, that I saved to show you guys. Okay. Um, it causes it to go from that condition to an aggregated, fluffy, soft, porous condition. Well, when clay does that, rainwater and irrigation water can leach the salts out of the way. Right, okay. And when you leach the salts out of the way, your clay then will change and start to behave like a healthy soil. And so I put humus down, not organic matter, not compost, humus is what I put down. Now I have basically instigated or primed the pedogenesis. Pedogenesis is a is a word that means soil creation. Okay. 
I primed the process and I created a sustainable process. So I don't have to do this anymore. From this point forward, the vegetation will continue to do it for me. So you don't keep on adding hummus to the soil, it just keeps growing its own yeah. hummus. Right. The, the amount of humus that we add is tiny, tiny. It, we don't, you don't add, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of this stuff. Um, isn't that nice and spongy? Yeah, this is really soft. Ooh, okay, remember, wow. this was clay. <laughs> So originally this was clay, and let's don't forget to get that big chunk out to show you. Um, look at all the roots. Wow. These roots are covered with a beneficial fungi My gosh. called mycorrhizae that are inside the root and outside the root, and they're basically helping to feed the plant. And the fungi also make a protein called glomalin which is the precursor for humus formation. So if you if you look at this stuff now. That's gorgeous. <laughs> that doesn't look like clay anymore, does it? No. And it's moist. This is very, very moist, and yet, you know, it just falls apart. Wow. Isn't that exciting? Hey, this feels How really deep good. do you think this would go? I've dug this... I've dug down here. It's about 14 inches deep here. Wow. So in, in 20 years, I have developed 14 inches of humus-rich topsoil. And, uh, well, you know, if you remember back to your school days when your teacher told you it, it, it'll take nature 100 years to grow, a, you know, a right. half inch of topsoil or a thousand years or whatever, well, we, we did a lot more than that in just a few short years. And we did it with a horrible soil to begin with. And, now, Michael, uh, you said the 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 precursor to humus is uh, amino acids. They're amino acids, correct. So where do they come from? From the protein that is being made by the mycorrhizae that are feeding that root. Oh. The mycorrhizae. This this is a root from this bamboo. And bamboo is a grass. So bamboo will use um, a type of mycorrhizae called glomus. Okay. Glomus is the genus of that type of mycorrhizae, and all your glomuses make a protein called glomalin. Okay. And this glomalin is rich, of course, uh, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And so basically what's happening is that uh, this bamboo is sequestering atmospheric carbon from the atmosphere and turning it into vegetable matter, and, the mic and then feeding the mycorrhizae carbohydrates. The mycorrhizae feed the bamboo water and minerals, uh -huh. and as a byproduct of this relationship, will make this glomalin substance. The glomalin is basically crammed full of carbon, which originally came from the photosynthesis that the bamboo performed. Right. So it's a carbon cycle. Okay. So now we have sequestered carbon into the soil, which I believe, by the way, is going to be the great next frontier of, of um, the carbon sequestering concept. We, I, I believe we could actually sell carbon credits by instigating soil building process. And um, so, because um, soil is really the, the mother load of, of carbon um, storage on earth more than any, anywhere else is, is in soil in the form of, of originally um, it's going to be in the form of organic matter, including the glomalin, but the glomalin can, is going to be converted through a biochemical transaction. It'll be converted into humus, and humus, unlike this substance, this organic matter that's decaying here, mm -hmm. or that leaf that's decaying, this will be gone in a year. All right, humus will not be gone. Humus has a resonance time in the soil of over a thousand years. Right. It doesn't decay. Okay, so once it's made, it's, in terms of our life expectancy, pretty permanent. Okay. <laughs>